guys, a play Brian back here once again for flea market thrift store finds for January. So got a pretty good haul this month. Uh, actually, I think a lot more toys than I usually pick up. So let's go through it and uh, we'll check out some of the cool toys that I got first. All right, so let's start off with a bunch of Star Wars toys that I found first. I picked this up at the uh, Columbus flea market. This is a uh, I think 1980 or 81 um, Bestman, uh, the Twin Pod Cloud Car. And this is from the original series, like the old Star Wars uh, toys. And it's missing the uh, glass covers, or the plastic covers that go over it. But I only paid a buck for this. So, you know, pretty cool. The legs still uh, fold out and it still displays really nicely in it. I have uh, Lobot and the uh, Twin Cloud Guard. And it, it still looks pretty cool, so for a buck, hey, you can't beat it. I've seen them go for much more than that with uh, other flea market vendors, and they're selling them for like 15 bucks, which is nuts, I think. Uh, also Star Wars related, found some really cool stuff at a local game store that I go to a lot. And I'm actually pretty sure it's always weird, since I grew up in New Jersey, to find stuff that I'm pretty sure came out of my house. Because um, a few years ago, my old childhood house was sold. Most of these flea markets are with like within like five to ten miles. Most of these stores, and I've found my old toys and old games at these places. So it's really crazy when I see something, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is mine. So these are a couple of those things. Um, these are Star Wars toys that were made by Micro Machines. And they made different uh, vehicles and play sets. Like this is Darth Vader's TIE Fighter here. And you can open up the little, the little hatch. And there's a little mini Darth Vader. He's got his cape you gotta put on. And you probably won't see him, but yeah, this little teeny tiny Darth Vader. And there would be a stand that would hold this up and you could put Vader down at the bottom like that. And the engine compartment actually opens up, just like in the movie when he gets uh, shot, or for like an extra boost of speed, which is really cool. And you can put Vader in his little cockpit there and close that. And it's really well detailed, really looks nice. And I think I paid five bucks for this one. And then I also found in the same spot, which is why I also think these both came from my house and my rooms. So I had both of these toys, and not a lot of people had these, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the Star Wars Dagobah, which is freaking awesome. Like, it's, uh, first it's the planet of Dagobah, which you can spin around, and it shows, like, the different continents, and, uh, like, the details of the planet. But then you can open it up, and it comes with Yoda, and it has, like, that flying creature, which I thought it had a name up there, but I don't remember. And, uh, Yoda spins around inside and you can see he has like his little mud hut and stuff and it's really cool and i used to have this displayed in my room as a kid so pretty wild to see something that i'm pretty sure probably came from my room main reason i say that is because they're two of the same things that i owned and for them to show up in the same shop like a few miles from my house i want to ask him if he has any more of it because if he has like the whole set of what I have, that's a pretty good bet that it all came from my old room, which is nuts. So anyway, moving right along, I just thought that was neat and wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, some more toys that I found. Uh, just yesterday I picked this up, which is really cool to add to my uh, Ghostbusters um, Kenner, you know, kind of a, I guess you can call them almost like, they're like live action toys, sort of, because like they had the Proton Pack and the PKE meter, and this is the um, Ecto Popper, and I had the Ecto Goggles, but I never realized that these went as a set, and it also has the uh, foam pellets that you can shoot out, and you would store them in the goggles, and um, I got this and a couple of other toys for only like 10 bucks, so this thing was like 3 bucks, which is a great deal, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but you squeeze it, and it shoots out the little foam pellets, which is really cool. Um, so, really cool find to pick that up and add to my Ghostbusters collections. I love Ghostbusters stuff. Uh, I also found a lot of good Transformers stuff over this past month, so let's go through that really quick. 
Got a good couple of characters here. Um, first off, I found Blur. Um, unfortunately, he's missing his shield. I got him at a local game store. But he's kind of kind of uncommon to come across. You don't see Blur too much, really, anywhere. Um, I paid 15 bucks for him, which I do think is a little high. Um, 15 should be complete with the shield, in my opinion, but I didn't realize it didn't have the shield in the package, so I'm a little bummed that I kind of overpaid for him. But, I mean, he still looks pretty nice, and he still looks good in his robot form, so I guess I'm okay with it. And I like Blur, so, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, I also found an interesting Decepticon that I never heard of before. Um, this guy is called Pounce, and he has a, a twin whose name escapes me at the moment, but he transforms from this little robot mode, so I can actually show you really quick here. He transforms into a, uh, into like a cat kind of creature, like a, uh, like a lion or something. And he's got his little tail you flip up there, and he kind of looks like a bad knockoff of Ravage, <laughs> but pretty neat. Yeah, and this is one of the toys I also got with the, uh, Ectopop or so. He was like a buck fifty and pretty cool. Well, he doesn't really look very cat like, in my opinion. Uh, this is also another one of the ones I got in that bundle yesterday. And this is Fizzle, who is one of the spark bots for the Autobots. Um, which I kind of thought was lame to begin with because his transformation is so basic. Like, I thought he was like a McDonald's toy. You just fold the arms down, put the head over, the legs go up. And I was like, oh man, I was like, that's pretty lame, even for a G1 McDonald's toy, but I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but uh, if you rev it up enough, I don't think I can do it here, so I don't have the friction, but, oh wait, maybe, there we go, but he has, like, sparks that come out the back, so I don't know if the camera will be able to catch that, uh, kind of neat, I guess, that's a saving feature of that, but I mean, for only a buck, I can't really complain too much. And then for two bucks, I bought off my good friend Dan at the Columbus Flea Market. Uh, this is Sinner Twin, one of the Terracons. So very cool to find him for only two bucks. You can see he has kind of like the two dinosaur dog faces. And then he transforms into his robot mode, which is also very basic. He just flips his arms backwards there, and he has these tiny little stub arms, which look kind of silly. And there you go, there's his robot form, but pretty cool. I like him in his uh, Terracon form a lot better, as like the, uh, the monster looks really cool. So for two bucks, and uh, my buddy Dan, he found a, his uh, number two uh, Transformer, uh, Ironhide, for like five bucks that day uh, when he was out with Nas. So awesome, you know, anybody finding a cool toy they're looking for, that's great. So I'm glad that he found that and got it cheap. Uh, moving along, I also found yesterday, man, I paid for this, but it was so cool, I had to freaking have it. Never seen one of these before. Um, it is a Luigi bank from 1988, licensed by Nintendo. And it has a little stopper in the bottom. I paid 20 bucks for this, which, yikes, I know, 20 bucks for this. But, you know, I know the guy's a video game retailer, it's really hard to get him to bend on his prices. And it's a, just a really cool looking display. You can see he's in his fire flower mode. And uh, just looks great. You know, really cool acrylic hand painted uh, plastic. And just really cool, nice, large design. And I'm uh, very pleased to add this to my collection, even though it was a little costly. And then also, in the way of things uh, being slightly pricey. Um, this I paid for a little bit as well, but it's one of those things where, again, you're never going to find it, so that's where the collector in me can kind of be a bit to my downside. But anyway, I believe I paid 25 bucks for this, and this is one of my most epic finds in a long time. And this is an Atari lunchbox. Look at this thing. This is amazing. You have the Asteroids and Yars Revenge, Missile Command, uh, Warlords, and Atari logo. And I'm trying to find a thermos for it, because for right now, I just have it paired up with a, uh, <laughs> with a Voltron thermos that doesn't have a home. So that doesn't really go on there, but the thermos doesn't have a home otherwise. But, I mean, just how cool is this? Like, 
I didn't even know this existed. Where are you going to see something like this again? Like, that's such an awesome showpiece. So, it's ecstatic to find that. Uh, I also found some interesting books. Uh, these were a buck a piece, and I used to have this. It's another book that I think I may have had as a kid, right in my same hometown, being sold. Uh, the Double Dare Game Book, which is kind of like for parties and stuff. It gives you, like, different Double Dare activities that you can do. It shows pictures of Mark Summers and the Double Dare team, and, like, the tongue slide and everything. And, uh, you know, just, just really cool. I love anything. Double Dare, really fun. And then there was the Volume 2 one. So if we're just a buck each, a buck each, definitely can't pass them up. And then also I picked up another uh, Far Side Gallery book. Got this at Columbus for only a dollar, a couple hundred pages. And if you don't know what the Far Side is or never heard of it, I definitely recommend that you, uh, you know, take a look at it by Gary Larson. You can remember the uh, the illustrator there for a minute, but this was some really cool. Um, way out there, political and social views uh, type of comic strip, and it's, it's just fantastic. I, I absolutely recommend this to anyone. Pick it up, look it up online. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's totally out there, thereby being called the far side, but one of the best cartoon strips or comics I've ever seen, ever. And then I also picked up, well, they're not toys, they're really cool, I picked up a couple of Jerky Boys cassettes. The original Jerky Boys, and the Jerky Boys 2. Now, why did I pick up the cassettes, you're probably asking. I could just pick them up on CD or download them off of iTunes. Well, I picked them up on cassette because I used to have the Jerky Boys 2 cassette. Um, and I loved listening to that as a kid growing up. So seeing the cover art again, you know, brought back a lot of memories. And then seeing the original Jerky Boys, you know, I grew up with the Jerky Boys. They were funny. And, uh... If you don't know what they are, they make, like, prank phone calls and stuff, and they are hilarious. They're so friggin' funny. So I still had the tape, but my tape player ate it and broke it, so, you know, it's kind of a bummer. So it was cool to see this again and be like, oh, cool, I can, you know, pick up the same tape with the same art and stuff. And that was cool, really fun. And then last but not least, almost forgot, um, I have a little pretender here that I found, which these are the Autobot Pretenders. And I don't remember how these were packaged. I just remember at some point in the Transformers life, they started giving these little rubber uh, figures when you bought certain Autobots as a promotion. And this is Snarl, I believe, one of the Dinobots. And I, I think I have Soundwave somewhere, but I can't find him. I don't know where he went. So that's kind of uh, concerning that I lost my other little pretender because they're really neat little rubber red figures. But I'd like to actually build a bigger collection of these and do a review on just on those alone sometime in the future. All right, and now let's take a look at some video games. So let's start off with uh, NES as usual, because that's probably the largest to go through. Um, this I just picked up uh, just yesterday, Tom and Jerry for the NES, pretty uncommon. Paid 10 bucks for it. Could have gotten it for a little bit cheaper a couple months ago. I saw it for eight, but 10's fair. It's about what it goes for. So I'm pretty satisfied that I picked that up. This is actually a really fun game. Um, the controls and gameplay are a little weird, but it's a fun game. It's cool. I recommend checking it out. I uh, also picked up uh, Tecmo NBA Basketball, which is kind of uncommon, because you usually see, like, Tecmo football and stuff. Uh, I paid four bucks for this. Nothing special. Just wanted to add it to my collection. I also picked up Tailspin. Uh, this was also ten bucks. Pick this up at a game store, but you don't really see this too much. And I love the Capcom cartoon theme games and stuff, so I really wanted to put that in with my collection as well. So cool find. Really, really bad game though, so don't recommend playing that. Um, this I found, which I couldn't believe I found. Very, very uncommon. Uh, this is Destiny of an Emperor for the NES. I think I paid 15 or 20 for this, which isn't bad. This goes for around like 35 to 40 bucks. And pretty, pretty rare. This is almost a borderline rare game. And it's kind of like Nabunga's Ambition, where, like, you, uh... It's like a simulator where you control trade and stuff in China and try to, like, level your guy up to be an emperor, I guess. So, pretty neat. It's made by Capcom, so it's got to be pretty good. You know, I hope. 
And then I picked this up at a game store. I think I also paid 10 for this, which isn't too bad. Um, Beetlejuice for the NES. And I don't care if this game is bad or good or whatever. I played it. And it's pretty fun. It's not great. Um, but I, I love Beetlejuice, so I couldn't pass on this. Just for the cover art alone, that's really cool to have in my collection. And then another rare game that I found. Uh, I found Dragon Warrior 2. Paid about 15 or 20 for that as well. Not too exciting. Uh, I found Yoshi's Cookie, which I paid five bucks for. Another uncommon game. Very fun puzzle game, by the way. Totally recommend that. And I found the Uncanny X-Men for the NES, which I personally think is uncommon. A lot of people think is kind of common, but I, I don't really see this too much, even at game stores that I go to. Paid five bucks for it. Horrible game. Don't play this. Don't recommend it at all. And then I picked up Totally Rad in the same bundle, uh, which this is just a cool looking game with a crazy neon yellow cover and like the dinosaur with the mohawk popping out. And this was again, I think like five bucks. So pretty uncommon game and you know, really fun. I just like the logo on the cover art. So really cool to add this to my collection, but a really strange game that doesn't really play too well. <laughs> and moving right along, I uh, found some Super Nintendo stuff. I uh, picked up Super Mario All-Stars for 20 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. And, you know, it's got Lost Levels and Mario 1, 2, and 3, so you can't go wrong with that. Been playing that a lot. Really fun. Uh, then I picked this up. This is called Gym Power, uh, The Lost Dimension 3D, um, which I only got because I was like, I never heard of this before. And there was like, you know, five bucks a piece. Uh, but it's a really, really crappy game. Like, it tries to be a good platformer, but it just sucks. It's absolutely horrible, so I do not recommend this at all. Um, kind of a game I wish I had not picked up, regardless of how cheap it was, so... You know, garbage. Avoid at all costs. Uh, I also picked up SimCity for the Super Nintendo for five bucks, so can't go wrong there. You know, pretty self-explanatory. If you see my original SimCity review, um, so really fun, really glad to pick that up. And then I picked up Hook as well for the Super Nintendo. Another great uh, Super Nintendo classic, glad to have found that as well. And moving along, that does it for Super Nintendo. A couple more things here. Uh, I found a manual for my copy of Sewer Shark for Sega CD, so that's kind of uncommon to find. I only paid a buck for that, so that was a good deal. And then I found some Turbo Graphics games, which I'll pick up anything Turbo Graphics if it's cheap enough. You know, I don't really care what it is. It's just impossible to find anything Turbo Graphics. Uh, this is King of Casino. I paid eight bucks for, which is good. It goes for around twenty. Uh, it's missing the insert, but it still has the original case saying King of Casino on it. And it's just a you know casino simulator with blackjack and roulette and stuff. But it's Turbo. You know, why would you not pick up Turbo Graphics stuff? And then this I got in the same bundle. Could not believe I found this out in the wild. Only 15 bucks. Uh, <laughs> Freudian slip. 15 bucks, not bonks. But it is Bonks Adventure for the Turbo Graphics. And this game easily goes for like 40 to 45 bucks for 15 bucks. And that's just the card. No box, no nothing. Like that's easily 40 to 45 bucks for this game. And one of my favorite games playing as a kid. I remember uh, my friend. In high school, he got a Neo Geo and a Turbo in the same year for Christmas, so all my friends quickly became friends with him. And, you know, started playing, like, Samurai Showdown on the Neo Geo and Bonk's Adventure and Splatterhouse, and I just remembered how fun this game was, and I'm so happy to add this to my collection. And then Atari. Unfortunately, didn't very find too much Atari stuff, but I found this yesterday, and this is a pretty uncommon, borderline rare game. And this is Flash Gordon for the Atari 2600. So, very cool to have found and picked that up. And only paid two bucks for it. It's, you know, probably a $20 game or so. And then last but not least, I also found some more Atari, even though it wasn't for the 2600, but it was for the Jaguar, which is equally cool. Uh, I found Zoop for the Jaguar, which I paid 10 bucks for, which isn't bad. I think it's worth 15 or 20. Uh, found Evolution Dino Dudes, which I bought the manual for 
at a convention a couple of months ago and I picked that up again for 15 bucks so not bad it's about 20 or 30 dollar game and pretty hard to find I love these Jaguar games they look like a little uh, Chinese dojo the way they have the handle up at the top so I just love collecting anything for the Jaguar it's so weird and being Atari's last system it's so cool just to find the stuff out there and then I also picked up Iron Soldier on the Jaguar for uh, I think like 15 as well and it's kind of like a mech warrior or like Gundam type simulator like that so you no know, another cool find so, all total, I think probably for the uh, month of January, I probably spent close to 200 bucks in, you know, games and toys and stuff, but uh, in all honesty, that's not bad. I mean, what I have is probably worth at least a good three to 400 or more, so, you know, getting everything at half price, and this is just basically going out on a weekend and maybe spending like, you know, I bring 50 or 60 bucks with me and just see what I can pick up, so... Uh, that's basically how I do it when I go around looking and just see whatever catches my eye. I never really have a plan for anything that I'm trying to find. But uh, that'll do it for flea market and first store pickups for the month of January. So guys, keep hunting out there in your local flea markets and thrift stores. And I'll see you back here next month for February. Take care. Hey guys, if you like the video that you just watched, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And if you do the Facebook or Twitter thing, follow me at hashtag Retro. See you next time.